Kaminga's hops make him look like the next Giannis, while the 19-year-old's IQ fits in perfectly with the Warriors' extremely advanced offensive system. Clay Thompson remains the owner of the Sacramento Kings organization, Stephen Curry's shooting slump is officially over, and the Dubs bench mob continues to look extremely potent. Here's how the Golden State Warriors are dominating the NBA, and stick around to find out what the most intimidating part about the Dubs is approaching the 2022 postseason. Right quick, only 12.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. In 15 outings this season when Stephen Curry suits up but Draymond Green doesn't, Golden State's gone 11-4 which has included an ongoing eight-game winning streak. Every headline centered around Curry since he broke the all-time three-pointers record has centered around his career-worst slump, which seemed impossible for a player possessing his once-in-a-lifetime shooting chops to have. But while doubters questioned whether such a historic feat had gone to his head or if defenses had suddenly figured him out, Curry quietly averaged a season-most 7.3 assists in January adjusting his game when Steve Kerr needed him to most. Don't get me wrong, Steph's below 40% shooting splits from the fields and from deep last month were of course far from typical. After the team's top facilitator, screen setter, and defender in Draymond went down, Steve Kerr, the front office, his teammates, not to mention Dubs Nation, have expected Curry to take on about twice as much of the two-way responsibility. To his credit, Steph's responded by perfectly adjusting his playing style, taking on more playmaking burden, while continuing his top-of-the-league defense at point guard. Steph's offense is raved about on a daily basis, but don't forget, the three-time champion isn't only number one among point guards in defensive rating just ahead of Chris Paul, but he also ranks number 15 among all players, right behind the young glove Gary Payton II in total deflections. For a player of Curry's status to be that high in such an important hustle stat just proves that despite being a world-renowned icon, Steph's all about the team and has little to no toxic ego, which keeps the vibe of the locker room up even when he's not shooting it well. It's very rare for a superstar of his caliber to have little to no toxic ego, by the way. But Steph is sniping like his typical self over the last four outings, as he's averaging 27 points, shooting 48% from the fields and from three-point range. A film room breakdown on Jonathan Kaminga is next, but in a bunch of Warrior videos I've posted in 2021-22, we've gone in depth on not just the top options around Steph, Clay, and Dre, and Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole, but Gary Payton II, Kevon Looney, Otto Porter Jr., Juan Toscano Anderson, even Evil Curry, Chris Chioza. The one man who's gone completely overlooked is the 29-year-old undrafted product out of Louisville and Damian Lee. Lee's not the lengthiest or most noteworthy Warriors defender. He is solid on that end of the floor, but his real value comes with his ingenuity offensively, as displayed on Thursday night with his long 1-2 step to get himself open for a corner triple. Damian has tremendous balance and footwork on his jumper, with a fundamentally sound release as well. Per game, the former Cardinal is taking three triples and knocking down 38% of them while averaging eight points on 46% shooting from the floor. Best part about Damian is how he elusively moves off the ball while other action is being run. He's established himself as one of the best off-ball cutters in the game today. For his 42 outings of solid basketball, Lee getting some respect was long overdue. Moving on to the Rook setting the NBA on fire. Jonathan Kaminga is an athletic beast whose pogo stick leaping ability defies physics. In their quest for another championship, John's the poster boy for the Golden State Warriors' unprecedented philosophy of surrounding their core with reliable and steady role players who are complementary, all while retaining draft picks and focusing on the development of their youth in an attempt to rebuild on the fly. By now, we know what Kaminga brings to the table, the springiness, raw defensive instincts, and an inherent feel for the game that's an extremely rare commodity among teenagers. Sacramento is one of the worst defenses in basketball, and that lack of team-wide stopping power was the ideal playground for Kaminga to display his full arsenal offensively. This possession is originally meant to be a low post split action. The primary and secondary options, the down screen and the slip and cut toward the rim are off the table. So the last resort option is a low post isolation 
Kaminga's natural bucket getting in the paint makes him perfectly suited for that last resort option. Also, his polished footwork, patience, and ability to manipulate defenders beyond his years allows him to pull off a nifty veteran-esque post move right here. As SB Nation's Joe V. Ray pointed out, a skill that isn't being talked about with Kaminga enough is his screen setting. Golden State has the least frequent pick and roll operators in the league, to be fair, as their 14 pick and roll possessions per game ranks number 29. They make occasional use of ball screens in some of their scripted play sets, though. One Action Motion Week is a play set originated from Greg Popovich and the San Antonio Spurs. On your screen, the Warriors run motion week at the beginning of the fourth quarter against Sacramento. This play is initiated with the floor general, in this case Steph, making a wing entry pass, preceded by Curry making a shallow cut towards the weak side wing and regaining possession of the ball. Directly after the rock spin reversed back to Curry, a screen placed underneath the rim known as a cross screen is then set for the player who will set the screen for the ball handler, otherwise known as a ram screen or screen the screener action, and that should flow into an empty corner pick and roll. But Davion Mitchell and Damian Jones don't even wait for the screen to be set, they immediately spring a double on Curry, who passes back out to Juan Toscano. Kaminga senses behind him that there's a free lane to the hoop, he subsequently dive cuts, and JTA easily finds him with a pinpoint lob pass for the finish. Kaminga wasn't able to fully set the screen, but he knew the lay of the land behind him and acted accordingly. That's a massively important trait to have as a screen setter for the likes of Curry and Klay Thompson, who will often draw doubles around ball screens and will count on a rim running force such as Kaminga to punish defenses for their commitment to the ball. And Kaminga may be the most dangerous role man that either Curry or Clay have ever played with. While the empty side corner pick and roll right here doesn't materialize, at least in the traditional sense, Kaminga was able to score on a more cookie cutter version with Clay as his ball handling partner. Kaminga's well aware of perhaps the number one rule when it comes to the Warriors' offense screen for a shooter whenever a shooter's nearby. Kaminga sets the wide down screen for Thompson right here, and with no one on the strong side corner, it turns into an empty side screen and roll action. Thompson draws two around the screen, finds Kaminga with an exceptional pocket pass. The weak side low man rotates over in an attempt to stop Kaminga, who showcases his ability to adjust his shot midair, finishing at the hoop. But for a team that sets the most off-ball screens in the NBA with 10.7 off-ball screen plays per game, it's necessary for the non-shooting contingent to be aware of shooters running toward their area, which is often a ringing alarm clock signaling them to set a screen. The signature off-ball screen for Curry and Thompson are the pin-in screens and relocation threes, also known as exit screens. Thompson, who finished with 23 points on 11 shots, was able to fire off two of his seven threes against the Kings on pin and screens that guaranteed him all the time and space in the worlds he needed to drill shots. Those pin and screens were set by Kaminga. Kaminga finished with 18 points on 10 shots, an efficient scoring performance that displayed virtually everything in his repertoire. The athleticism is off the charts, the overall feel for the game is astounding, and the versatile scoring is what'll draw plenty of attention. But the screen setting chops when to set them, and how to set them, and what to do after setting them, is something that shouldn't be ignored. The most intimidating aspect of the current dubs attack is the fact that it's flowing so nicely on both ends without an all-time great two-way big man in Draymond Green. Additionally, Klay Thompson has scored at least 11 points in every game since his return, which was topped off by his second 23-point outing on Thursday, still limited to below 30 minutes. Thompson made 78% of his nine three-point attempts, against Sacktown, reminding them of his 37-point quarter back in 2015. But whether it's Clay, the dub's beastliness minus Dre, or Steph's slump being over, what's the most intimidating part about the Warriors' dominance? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Irvin Alexar Guerra, who says, I think that the Celtics will continue to turn their narrative around as the season goes on, assuming no injuries and no screw-ups from the front office in the trade deadline. Thanks for every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.